all right good afternoon everyone welcome to the channel as you can see the six the c6 is back at the house um with this issue but that'll be another vi video um to cover that but it's working fine uh 1600 repair bill later but what we are doing here today is we're working on the c4 corvette so engineering cooling products has come through again um, with the dual core radiator it is um, the same radiator I got in the C6 performs phenomenally well you know you got the witch you got be cool you got Mishimoto probably some other ones out there dual core radiators cost 600 700 800 dollars this is an affordable dual core radiator it costs about 220 240 shipped so it performs great in the C6 Corvette in the track I highly recommend it so I'm gonna go ahead and put the same thing in the C4 and try to get these cooling temps down so first thing first, let's go ahead and break open a box and make sure that everything looks right inside so that I don't pull a radiator out and that's not the right radiator or something looks jacked up. But let's go ahead and pull out the box and then we'll get, get to taking apart in the C4's uh, radiator real quick. All right, as you can see, dual core radiator. Nice and thick, great, great welds on and stuff like that. All aluminum, um, has two ports for the uh, for the um, automatic transmissions for me to run um, transmission fluid through there so let's uh pretty self-explanatory so let's go on and get this installed um, first thing we're going to do of course packed up moving out to the side but we're going to take the air bridge off um, and the air filter then after that take the fan shroud out and disconnect the fans um, oh also got to drain the radiator so probably the first thing I'll do disconnect the air bridge so I don't have to be uh, reaching over the car and then I'll jack it up and drain the radiator yeah okay I got the car jacked up air bridge off already pulled the plug on the bottom and it's draining um, cool. yep I got the green stuff in there that was what's recommended uh, and um, what was I gonna say once you pull once you drain it all out again then you take this hose off more it's going to come out just because i think it has something to do with air in the system or vacuums and yada 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 so got that top one off got to do the lower radiator then also got to do some of these crossovers right here easy stuff um i think the biggest the hardest one to be honest with you is actually going to be taking the um the transmission lines off and be honest with you with two transmission coolers i really don't need this to be hooked up but i'll just probably leave it the way it is but yeah, let's go ahead and take these off real quick. Yeah. Didn't realize the camera wasn't focused. But yeah, let's go ahead and take this one off. I forget what this is this one's for. I think this is originally was a cooling crossover too for the throttle body, but that I've since eliminated. Coolant used to cross through the throttle body. Um Actually, no, this is the crossover too for the rear. For the rear of the heads. But let's see if anything comes out here. Nope. That's good. So, yep. Next one is the two transmission lines. Got one hard line right here. Then got a soft line uh, down at the bottom. But I'm going to drive the floor because I'm not going to lay in that. I already changed my shirt once. Okay, so I removed the three top. Um, fan shroud bolts and then there's three at the bottom relatively really easy 10 millimeter they're right there pretty sure this one on the side here is 10 millimeter as well probably got to put a wrench on there also took off the lower radiator hose and the um transmission cooling line um for the bottom too so those all drained out so let's go ahead and get these two side ones off and then the fan shroud should come off pretty pretty simple and fast all right, so got the fan shroud off. Did as best I can. Didn't really break anything. It wasn't already broken. I was about to pull the radiator out, and then I realized, oh, ooh, good thing I came back in here and look that the transmission cooler is actually attached to the uh, condenser. Man, I need to rinse that off. I had a leak on the um, transmission cooler, so there's a it's a lot of grime there, and it's probably clogged up and restricting airflow. But let's go ahead and pull this uh, radiator out and. Uh, worry about cleaning that a little bit in a minute all right so here's the radiator out over here and here's a new one 
looks like everything should line up I <laughs> hope so definitely twice as thick dual core radiator um, no sense of holding on to this one even though it's perfectly fine just need to throw it in the trash also just need to transfer this little this little fitting over oh great yep Th threads lined up nice and nice and good so yeah go ahead and tighten this on and then go ahead and just do everything in reverse the hardest part is probably the filling process because you gotta get the oil out I mean not the oil the air out of the system it's not like a C6 or a C5 Corvette where it has a self burping system that lets all the air out so I'll show you guys that process in a little bit but yeah let's go ahead and slide that in okay so we have pretty much it all back together Lashad my friend came over and helped me put it back together um, real quick he came over with his son it was actually really easy and, and, and back straight forward it even fit the dual core radiator even fit with the fan shroud I thought maybe it wasn't gonna fit but everything lined up great perfectly I mean it truly is a stock fit I mean only thing is I ripped off this the piece of the fan shroud it was already hanging on by a thread which I really don't care however they didn't have um a stick a transmission cooling line uh, po post coming out so I'm about to go to the auto parts store and go get one real quick and also go get cooling and that's the and then they're got to do the um, bleeding uh, air bleeding sit of the system and um, and uh, just making sure there's no leaks so yeah well the auto parts store does not have the correct fitting they don't have any in automatic transmission radiator blah 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 fitting lines they only have MPT fuel lines and that's all I have over there so I'm gonna have to order from Summit it costs six dollars come in tomorrow or Wednesday and uh, yeah that'd be the last thing so I'll go ahead and put the air bridge on um, and um, just just pick this up next time okay so I wasted about four hours of my day looking for the proper fitting that goes here couldn't find it after spending an hour and a half at Home Depot more time at another O'Reilly's then another time at an advanced auto parts so I'm just gonna wing it see if it works if it if it holds pressure and doesn't leak out of there so the way you um, fill up um, you bleed the system on a C4 Corvette is you have this little valve right here that you need to loosen up this is like the the cooling weeping valve or to get air bubbles out so you loosen that up and then you take the cap off and of course you know after you take the cap off if this cap will come off there you go and then you just go ahead and fill it up and um, let me go get a light and try to show you guys the process a little better Alright, so here we are about two days later still working on this trans uh, on this um, car so you already know I couldn't find the cool the another fitting and I just went ahead and used what one I had in there but however the transmission cooling line going into the radiator um, you can see it kind of hanging right there it um, the one that goes into the radiator it just wouldn't go in all the way it wasn't secure so basically the fitting let me see if I'm gonna grab it the fitting was not being pressed in all the way um, as you as you tighten it in and so basically it was loose and so since it was loose and not nice and flush it was causing fluid to leak out of it um, and uh, just accumulate on the ground now where is it I just here it is I actually left it out to be uh, to be filmed so this pipe um, it was kind of going like this and so it was uh, as you can see it kind of moves around and it's not um, secure so 
in order for it to prevent any fluid from leaking through it needs to be nice and flush and stiff and not be able to move or wobble around so when I tighten it in there it was not flush and it was probably it was probably just a little bit like this um, so that's why the fluid kept leaking through so basically what I did um, is I just went ahead and eliminated the whole transmission going the transmission cooling going through the um, actual radiator and just left it to the two um, uh, the two coolers I already have in, um, installed on the car so there's currently two coolers installed on the car there's one right here up front and then there is a heat sink type and I'll show you guys real quick that is laying right here maybe this heat sink type probably maybe about 10 or 15 degrees of cooling but most of my cooling was coming from this one up front so I went ahead and just bypassed the traditional radiator so now it's not going through the radiator and it's just it's just going through here so next step is just run the car make sure there's no leaks and then also finish out my cooling pro cooling process so it's really fuming me in here uh, from the exhaust gases but uh only thing really left to do is actually do a test drive to make sure it's all good but it was idling fine for the last uh five to ten minutes um got up to about 178 on the temperature so uh no the thermostat opens up at 160 so letting uh we'll uh let the car cool down and top it off and uh see where it's at and then drive it around but that's the last part of this segment. Next thing we're going to be doing is an oil cooler install. And we'll probably be removing the bumper uh, just to make things easier. Because there's another thing I want to do with the fog lights and the bumper here. And the only way to get the fog lights is you got to take the bumper off. But if you haven't made the channel before, please like, please subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching. And this is how you change a radiator on a C4 Corvette or pretty much any car. Well, at least any Corvette. Pretty simple and uh, straightforward. Thanks for watching.